Most types of post-pregnancy pains don't last long, but for our next guest, not only did her pain last years, it went misdiagnosed. I was a triathlete for many years. I ran competitive 5Ks. I was a fitness competitor. When I had my first kid at age 24 is when I first started to notice the pain. And at the time, I really just thought it was my tailbone. I was misdiagnosed many times. Was I was told that I had degenerative disc disease. When I went through my second pregnancy, I was 35 years old and I had twins and they were seven pounds each. After that pregnancy is when things really started to get worse. So I probably went to um, 10 to 12 different physical therapists. A lot of times I couldn't even bend over to brush my teeth. I would get steroid injections. I even had um, SI injections um, directly into my SI joint. And I had maxed out the number of injections that I could get. It was probably the last 15 years that, um, you know, I really struggled trying to find someone to really figure out what was going on with it. My last physical therapist was able to pinpoint that it was coming from my SI joint. And it was kind of like an aha moment. Everyone, please welcome Jamie to the show. Okay. Jamie, I'm sorry you went so long not getting the proper diagnosis and suffering in pain. You know, ultimately, you got the correct diagnosis. Can you talk a little bit about that and then what you did next? Once I did finally figure out that it was my SI joint, um, you know, I started doing my own research and trying to figure out, you know, what I could do about it because, you know, I couldn't really find a doctor that could figure out what was wrong with me. So I took it upon myself to really <laughs> use Google and, and go and do my own research and, and, and find a procedure that was going to help me. Well, we're also joined today by orthopedic spine surgeon Dr. Michael Mohimi. And uh, let's talk just briefly, if we could, about how common women might end up in a position like Jamie. We think somewhere around 5% of all pregnant women probably have some type of sacroiliac pain or dysfunction. But more importantly, is like the general population as a whole has lower back pain. I mean, about 80% of people have lower back pain. Um, and there's about 30 million people living with chronic lower back pain. Of that 30 million, maybe 10 to 30% have SI joint issues. Until doctors and patients kind of really recognize SI joint as an issue, it's going to continue to grow. And I'm, I'm just curious about how you helped her. Tell us, tell us about what you did. If you fail conservative treatment, the surgical option you can do is a minimally invasive surgery, something called a minimally invasive sacroiliac fusion. And I use this iFuse system. And basically, just like a joint anywhere in the body, the hip or the knee, you have two bones that normally move. Um, you want to stop them from moving, and then it won't hurt. So you can drill across the joint um, and create a path, and then place a triangular implant across the joint. That triangle stops the joint from moving. And then if you don't move, it doesn't rub, no inflammation, no pain. But can you do this if you're planning to get pregnant again? Because uh, once you perform that fusion, wouldn't that be difficult with the subsequent pregnancy? Yeah, in general, that's kind of a, a contraindication for doing the procedure is because you, you will lose the ability to kind of get the pelvis to expand. So you could have to have C-sections if you have that procedure, especially bilateral, both sides. All right, Jamie, question. how are you feeling? <laughs> I feel great. I mean, it's, it's like a new lease on life. I mean, as soon as I got the surgery, it was super easy. I was in and out of the hospital really quick. Um, you know, I got home, spent six weeks on crutches, but I could immediately sit up, like even in just in the bed, which I couldn't do before. I couldn't sit in a chair for, you know, a couple of years. And I mean, now I'm, you know, boxing, I'm lifting, I'm running, I'm spinning, I'm yoga, I'm coaching my daughter's soccer team, which I wow. it never would have dreamed I could be able to do. Good for so, you. Yeah. So, That's a lot. so Doc, no limitations after doing the fusion. She can go back to mm -mm. everything yeah. she was doing and it sounds like even more. Yeah, correct. I mean, right immediately post-op, we try to restrict their weight bearing a little bit, give the bones a chance to heal. After that, once the bone is grown, yeah, the sky's the limit. And I would love for our control room, if you could just pull up that image again of the sacroiliac joint. And I want everyone at home just to look at this area because there are a lot of people out there who don't understand. You know, it's, it's, it's in an area that's slightly different than your traditional low back pain, and yet a lot of people aren't familiar with it. And if you notice that your pain is kind of right where that sacrum and ilium meet, you know, you, you, you may have to even be with your, your doctor and say, hey, this is different than anything I've had before. And, and you know, really try to get the correct diagnosis because if they just keep treating you for back strain, you're not gonna get the proper treatment. Yeah. We're just very happy, Jamie, that you have the fix that you needed. Yeah. And, and that you were your own advocate and yeah. you were able to Absolutely. figure this out, so well yeah. done. And sorry it took that long. Dr. Marini, thank you.